Alright, welcome back everybody. This is going to be a video about the game number two that I teach. These are the requirements for game number two. Well, you're going to have an object. It's going to move according to a rise and run. It's not going to be built in multi-minute fusion to movement. You're going to let the player control the rise and the run. And the object is to try to hit something. Uh, you can do this however you'd like to. It's not that hard of a game. So first off, we have this object. I'm just going to leave it simple right now. It needs a couple more values. We're going to add one that's called it rise. We're going to add another call at run. Okay, and then this object is going to move according to those. So in the code, this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to do always. This thing's position, we're going to set its x coordinate to its old x coordinate. And then plus this thing's values the run. Okay, so it's always going to move relative to where it is, and it's always going to add the run. So if the run starts at 2, it's going to take wherever it was, plus 2, and redraw it there. And the next frame is going to redraw it, same place it was, plus 2. So it's going to move gradually in, in steps of 2 pixels each, or whatever the run is. I'm going to do that same exact thing for the Y. So set the Y coordinate to the old Y coordinate. And this time plus its uh, rise. If you want to keep this the same way as math class, so that the, a positive slope of like 1, 1 will go in a positive direction, or like towards coordinate 1 and 3, you're going to have to do minus. Because remember, on computers, this up here is 0, 0, and y increases as it goes down. So the computers you can kind of treat it like it's upside down. So that's why I'm doing a minus there. So, all we have to do now is set these rise and runs as something, like 1 and 1, and as soon as I play this, it's going to move according to that. If I set this differently, like the rise is 0, and the run is 3, then it's going to move more quickly, but just in that direction. So by changing these to whatever we want, we can kind of aim our, our object to move in a certain direction. If you ever move it too fast, like 15 and, I'll keep that lower, like 4 and 15 there, uh, that's going to move pretty fast. Uh, sometimes it, it kind of moves in 14 pixel jumps. It's not that accurate. Uh, I'm going to have a later video showing how to do fast loops. So watch for a video about fast loops. Uh, and we can get a, a little bit more accurate of the movement, but right now you're going to have to tell the player just to keep keep the values pretty small, and you can force the players to keep it small. So that's that. The next things we have to do, uh, according to our rules, is that uh, it has to move according to rise and run. That's really easy. We just have that. It's just one equation for each one. And we also have to let the player control the rise and the run. There's a couple different ways we can do this. One way is to make an edit box. This. Okay, I'm going to duplicate clone that. Okay, I'm going to rename this one as the run box. And this one should be the rise box. Okay, and I'll put in a button because buttons are always nice to have. And it will have it say fire. Okay, so we have some stuff here. Okay, so like this, we can have the ob or the player enter in an, a number here, enter in a number here, hit fire, and that's when it sets these numbers to this guy's rise and run, and it'll start moving. So this needs to start at 0 and 0. So at the beginning, it's always going to be moving, but if it moves 0 pixels, then it doesn't really go anywhere. So if we play this, we should be able to enter in numbers here. That didn't do anything yet, but that's, that's about how it's going to work. So, a new condition when the button is clicked. Okay, we also need probably to check if these things are numbers, which I'm pretty sure it can do that. So is that text a number? And insert, is this guy a number as well? Okay, so when both of those numbers and the button is clicked, then we can do something. 
what we're going to do is set the rise to the rise box, get numeric value, and values set the run to the run box numeric value. Okay, that's pretty much all we have to do. Hit play. Nothing happens. We enter in two, we enter in three, and fire, and it starts moving in that slope, which is pretty awesome. Now, our third part, we have to try to hit something. So, let's come back in here. We're going to insert a, another active object. Let's make this a little bigger. Make a 64 by 64. This will be easy. And let's redraw this to be a big green. Green circle. There we go. There's our target. Uh, if you want to add in some in some code to move this around um, or place it in a different spot whenever the, the frame reloads, that would be cool. So then the player has to find out what slope would hit that object and then enter that in. Next time they play, they have to find a slope that will hit this. You can randomize the start position of this. You can randomize the start position of this object. Lots of different things you can do. Uh, but now we can try to hit that. Um, as far as programming, when this hits that, you should be able to do that from the Bricker game already. So when they collide, you can have something happen. Whatever you want to happen, you can do that, whether it's going to another frame or whether it's making things explode or fireworks or whatever else. That's the basic gist of this. Um, some people want to do these a little different. So we're going to delete those. Do it a little bit differently. This time we're going to insert counters. There it is. Okay. These counters are pretty cool. I'm going to set these at zero. The maximum value is going to be... Um, I'm just going to say six. Instead of numbers, I want this to be a vertical bar. I'm actually going to rename that as uh, rise box. Same thing as before. Let's change this so it looks a little bit better. Okay, so this is going to be the rise bar. I can duplicate that or clone it. This one is going to be the run box. This one's going to be a horizontal bar. And it's also from 0 to 6, which means I need to squish this down. Okay, so those start right there. This will start in the middle. So, uh, we need to attach these so the player can control how big these go. So in the code, when the keyboard, I'm just going to do this, when you press the up key, this virtual counter is going to add 1. When you press the down key, this one is going to subtract one. Okay, so press play. You can see I can grow and shrink that counter. This can be this Y speed. Or the rise. When you press right, this counter is going to add one. When you press left, it's going to subtract one. Pretty simple. Oh, it's counting the wrong way. Okay, so we can use those to control the speed. This thing needs to move from the left. Alright. So we do need a, a button that says when to fire. So we'll say when... I can actually do it right here. We don't need a button. When you press enter, that's when it's going to fire. So we set the rise to whatever this counter is, current value. And we, not that, we set the run 
to this thing's current value. Okay, otherwise it will be zero until we hit enter. Uh, we should also say, well, if it's if it's if the counters are zero and we hit enter, it's not going to move anywhere. So that's fine. So we'll hit play, control that, hit enter, and we just scrape the side of that thing. So now your players can kind of control how they move that. Other than that, uh, this is going to be good. Now, a little bonus at the end of this video. There's a way to add gravity to this. And you can kind of turn this into a kind of a very popular game about where you shoot small feathered animals to hit small furry animals. Uh, so instead of just moving a straight line, you can actually make it parabola and have gravity. So it pulls it back down. It's actually really, really easy to add. All you have to do, because it has a, a rise, is one little event of always. You're going to take this thing's rise. Okay, so the rise to the rise plus 0 0.06 we'll start with. Okay, 0 0.06. And now when we play this, that backwards. It does have to be minus. Um, I'm gonna add a button. Sorry, I need to change this a little bit. So instead of having this always move, it's gonna have to have a value or a flag to, to tell it when it is allowed to move. So this button is gonna kind of control. So the gravity is not gonna be added until this button's clicked. It's, otherwise it's gonna be static. So, when you hit enter, I'm sorry, I'm going to replace that, and the button's clicked. Set on flag zero. Okay, and we can only move these things when the flag is on. So, insert values, flags, is flag on, flag zero. And same thing for this. Okay, so when the flag is on, then it can move and then it can add gravity. The only way to get the flag on is to click the button. Okay. So set the rise and the run a little bit. We should be able to click that. And it will come up and it will fall back down. Okay. Let's restart that. So we should be able to choose the rise and the run, fire it, and it should come up and back down. Okay, there's the, there's your gravity. If you want to control that gravity, you just need to f change this very last number, this 0 0.06. Uh, the way to see this is just an acceleration. It changes the velocity each time. So and when the velocity changes, good or bad, or positive or negative, it uh, is accelerating either upwards or downwards. And if you want to add this number like this to the horizontal movement, the run, all that does is make accelerate forward or backwards. Which is pretty simple. That's This one line of code gives the gravity, which is pretty awesome. And that will conclude this video. If you have questions, you know where to find me.